Probably a year or so ago, somebody asked me what I thought about the Christian nativist movement. I would never even heard of the Christian nativist movement. I looked into it and um, it was very interesting that uh, back years ago, back in the 19th century, uh, a lot of Christians in this country were actually fighting against a lot of the Roman Catholic immigrants being brought in, into this nation to destroy this nation. Um, and uh, it's happening today too with the uh, Mexicans that are being brought in and everything else. Uh, all the radical Catholic Mexicans that are being brought in, and yet Chinese, and and then there's others that are being brought in too. Huge numbers through the southern border. Yeah, it's a, it's a warfare technique, brethren. You, you bring in lots of people to eat up the substance of those that are in the land, and you destroy them that way. But uh, did a little bit of research, and I've looked into some of this Christian nativist stuff, but I'll read some things here on this paper here. Um it says, in favor of the protection of American uh, mechanics against foreign uh, pauper labor, foreigners having a residence in the country of 21 years before voting, our present free school system carrying out the laws of the state as regards sending back foreign paupers and criminals. <sighs> Happening today again with the southern border thing. Opposed to, uh, this is the thing, these are the things they're opposed to, papal aggression and Roman Catholicism. Roman Catholic, or all Roman Catholics have two allegiances, to the Vatican first and second to their country. And if the Vatican says overthrow your country, they'll do it. Go out and kill Protestants, they'll do it. Okay, right now we're under the Second Vatican Council, the Ecumenical Council, but that's going to go away eventually. When the Catholics have enough power in this nation, they'll rise up and start killing Bible-believing Christians and anybody else that protests their system. You know, that's why you have to fight against them. Uh, foreigners holding office. That's yeah, a good thing. Raising foreign military companies in the United States. Yeah, that doesn't happen today, does it? Sleeper cells and everything else in this nation. Nunneries and the Jesuits were opposed to the Jesuits. Very significant thing coming up here with that. To being taxed for the support of foreign paupers millions of dollars yearly. Foreign paupers people coming in and we're being taxed for that. We have to pay for them. All the free things that these people are given. Disgusting. The secret foreign orders in the U.S. I'm definitely opposed to that as well. We are burdened with enormous taxes by foreigners. We are corrupted in the morals of our youth. We are in, interfered with in our government. We are forced into collisions with other nations. We are tampered with in our religion. We are injured in our labor. We are assailed in our freedom of speech. Still going on right now, brethren. Isn't that something? Oh, such a terrible movement. Some Hollywood movie came out about you know showing Christian nativists killing Catholics and whatever. They always spin things. It's just ridiculous. But disgusting. But check this thing out. It, this is NBC News Learn. All right, let's watch this real quick here. Immigrants in the 1840s and 50s inflamed national prejudices. Many Americans feared Irish and German immigrants would outbreed, outvote, and outwork native-born Americans. Anti-immigrant groups quickly formed and began to call themselves nativists. Nativism is not just simply the irrational hatred of newcomers. And okay, Edward T. O'Donnell. Now, do you remember one of the groups that was the nativists were against? They were against Jesuits. History professor Holy Cross. College. What's Holy Cross College? I wonder. I just wonder. The Holy College of the Holy Cross is a private Jesuit liberal arts college in Worcester, Massachusetts. You mean to tell me that they would have a nativist video and have a Jesuit professor speaking? But I'm sure that they're going to have a Protestant come in and give his thoughts on it, right? Let's continue fear of foreigners and fear of people who are different. You can actually break nativism down into a series of, of themes, a th series of issues that, that people uh, worry about. One of them is certainly economic. Immigrants represent, in many people's minds, job competition. They are willing to work for less, therefore they'll pull people's wages down. Mm -hmm. Nativists also feared the growing political power of immigrants as Irish and German immigrants filled America's cities and earned the right to vote. They're able to greatly influence and essentially take over uh, the political systems in these cities, including big cities like New York and Boston, Philadelphia. So there's fear that there's literally this immigrant takeover uh, politically uh, taking place. Uh, did it happen? 
Yes. Oh, the, the nativists were afraid of these things happening. And, well, they did happen. So I guess the nativists were right. But more than anything, nativists mistrusted the religious beliefs that the new immigrants brought with them from Europe. That's probably the number one consistent concern of, of nativists is that these immigrants are, the majority of them are Catholics. Almost 100% of the Irish that are coming after the 1830s are Catholic immigrants and about 50% of the Germans that arrive in this time period are Catholics. America has long had an anti-Catholic tradition. Um, comes goes back into the colonial period. And this is well, why, why? Oh, I don't know. Over a thousand years of dark ages, the Roman Catholics persecuting Bible-believing Christians and heretics, burning them at the stake. The Spanish Inquisition. I don't imagine why Americans would be so anti-Catholic. <laughs> Part of America's heritage, uh, you know, that, that it was founded largely, very self-consciously, as a Protestant nation. Americans thought of themselves as Protestants and uh, were steeped in the fears and concerns of Protestants about Catholics going back to the Reformation and even before then. They saw the, the Pope not as a religious figure, they saw him as a player, as a king in Europe who meddled in political affairs, who got involved in wars, who started wars. Yeah, it's called the spiritual and temporal swords of the Vatican, official Catholic doctrine. Nativists saw the multiplying numbers of Irish and German Catholics as a conspiracy by the Pope to take over the Republic. In America's biggest cities, nativist groups attacked and burned Catholic churches, schools, even orphanages. As these small anti-immigrant groups grew in number, they formed a new political party called the Know Nothing Party. Well, the Know Nothings is a kind of a nickname that applied to the American Party, and they get the name from the secrecy that, was, that surrounded the organization. The rule was if you were asked about the organization, people said, what is this group you belong to? You were ordered to answer, I know nothing. The Know Nothings ran candidates for political office in state after state in the Northeast. They vowed to pass restrictive immigration laws, like one that would make immigrants wait 21 years before they could become voting citizens, and another that would prevent anyone who wasn't a native-born American from holding any political office. In 1854, the Know Nothing Party had their largest victory in the country, capturing the governor's office in Massachusetts, the entire state senate, and the House of Representatives. But once they came into power, the Know Nothings never passed the tough anti-immigration measures that they promised. And by ignoring the growing issue of slavery, they became irrelevant to both northerners and southerners. Eventually, yeah, it's called the the whole movement was infiltrated by Freemasons, which were controlled by the Jesuits. Yeah, they brought it to nothing. Actually, the Know Nothing Party dissolved, and many of their supporters gravitated to the Republican Party, formed in 1854. The Know Nothings would no longer be a viable party, but as long as immigrants kept arriving in America, anti-immigrant feelings would continue to grow. So, you know, uh, there's anti-immigration stuff and there's there's bad things out there because you know people were so paranoid that they thought that it would actually ruin the country as it's ruined the country see how the Jesuits do things they'll come out and they'll tell you the truth of what people felt and that you know well they, they thought it would ruin the country and then just not say to the fact that yes it did actually ruin the country so um, uh, this nation is gone, and um, we all just have to pray and seek the Lord's will as America falls apart, as um, armies of people are brought in here as this to destroy this nation. Um, perilous times shall come, brethren. They're here, and it's just going to get worse from here. Um, don't worry about being a some kind of massive soul-winning Christian, whatever else, you just pray for God to give you divine appointments and just say, Lord, if you want, if there's somebody out there that needs to be saved, that genuinely will be saved and not just fake me out or something, tell me what they think I want to, them to hear or whatever, um, then okay, witness to that person. But uh, our main thing right now is we just, we need to pray for the, the destruction of this nation. Um, America is too far gone to bring back. Um, and the movement that will come in the future will be an alt-right movement. Um, although they could use the left to 
raise you know rise up so powerfully if they you know can make things happen and they can come after us with that so um, it's it's a very trying time brethren uh, if you've seen my other video that you know they're banning the King James Bible in Utah schools and um, hey they get these these uh, perverts and things they could just keep on pushing until they start to get the right to kill us so it's kind of you know what do you want to do let the trad cat come to power the alt-right or the insane communistic liberal left come to power and they want to kill us as well um, we need to see some major chaos type of things happen that hopefully a lot of these people can fight each other and then we can be kind of step back and <laughs> left alone um, but uh, just insane wanted to make a video on both those issues and uh, but don't pray for America brethren unless it's pray for praying for God's judgment of this nation it needs to be judged so um, I'm going to stay on the firing line Lord willing no matter what um, please do pray for our safety our office is right here on the main street thankfully there's not a lot of, a lot of uh, huge amounts of liberals or anything but um, we could be attacked and I'm, I'm not going to change I'm going to do my very best to stand and fight um, with the sword of the spirit so that is going to be it. Please do keep us in your prayers. Thank you for watching.